A lot of time teachers give you multiple stories from the same author, kind of covering a little bit more of that author's flavor, maybe getting a couple different messages. Today, we are once again coming back to Papa Hemingway with Cat in the Rain, following up our Hills Like White Elephants talk. Let's talk about iceberg theory and the economy of word choice here, where it's my way or the Hemingway. Um, I thought we were supposed to read Cat in the Hat. <laughs> <laughs> if you are new to the Codex Cantina, we take a conversational approach to literature, talking about some of the most important stories that have influenced even today's writers. If you're down for that type of approach, hit that subscribe button to join us. And as always, we start off with publication information. Cat in the Rain was published in 1925 in the short story collection In Our Time. We returned with Papa, the king of leaving things unsaid. The idea is... What we're getting is just is just the tip of the iceberg, right? We're just getting these words on a page. You're done and you're like, what the heck just happened? <laughs> you yeah, gotta I, you gotta you gotta dive into those freezing waters and really start pulling out some of the hidden elements behind the story. And I think that's where we enter into a very subjective land with this story. Yeah, I think that's the reason that I've always been frustrated with Hemingway is just this open-endedness. And I realized that that's his shtick. And I realized that there is a lot more to it if you break down and analyze it. And I think a lot of students will feel that way when they get it assigned. They're like, oh, this Hemingway, he's terrible. Let's go through maybe some pieces to help guide you through different ways to think about this story. Because I think it's very open to our own experience when it comes to providing meaning. And one of the things that I would provide to you is Hemingway had well, tons of biographies written about him and one called Hemingway's Cats. We have this story about basically you know, Hemingway had just become recently married to Hadley, his first wife, who did have short hair, much like our, our main character in this story. And at the same time, she always wanted a cat when, when Hemingway was off in Paris writing. She wanted this pet to kind of keep her company. And there was one day where she apparently just had a very emotional, expressional moment of of wanting a cat right as she kind of became pregnant and Hemingway allegedly birthed this story out of that. Let's keep that in mind and jump into a quick plot recap and then do some analysis on this. I am utterless crypto. Please guide me. <laughs> so for a plot, two Americans are staying at a hotel in Italy. They don't know anyone there. Head up to the room when it starts raining. The wife sees a cat hiding under a table from the rain. She heads down, talks to the hotel keeper, who she adores, <laughs> and heads out to retrieve the cat. She's unable to find the cat, returns upstairs empty-handed to her husband. She has a moment of expression, saying that she wants shorter hair, candles, a cat. Husband kind of ignores her and keeps on reading. Soon a maid comes up the stairs with a tortoise-shelled cat to deliver to the wife. End plot. Ah, uh, come on, just give it to me, Hemingway, please. <laughs> Tell me. Is it the cat? Is it Ugh. the same cat or not? Let's jump into this. One of the first things that immediately jumps out to my mind is, is we've seen this with some other writers such as Mom. He had a short story in A Strange Land where once again, you have a foreigner, in this case two Americans, staying in a foreign country's hotel. And what does that do for these characters? It immediately isolates them. The We assume the only interaction they probably have on an authentic level are each other. And sometimes that's challenged by the environment. Sometimes they dive into each other. Sometimes it pulls each other away. Which way is Hemingway going to take this one, right? Yeah, I feel like that this is that isolation leaning to, even though you have somebody in your life, loneliness, and she feels like she needs this cat as companionship to fill that void. All right, is that what kind of I think he's going for? Let's let's do this piece by piece, okay? He starts the story out making several references to a war monument, right? All the people are coming around to gaze at this. Okay, so that's what we think society or the normalcy is in a short story, right? Hemingway, economy of words, very quickly delivering to you, here's the expectation of how most people behave, and we know the context of the time. It's a post-war conversation because of these war monuments. But how do our two main characters act, right? They act much different, where instead of focusing on the war, right, we have the guy who could be representative of that. We don't know, but he's ignoring it. 
right? He's trying to move on. He's driving into himself, maybe having a hard time to connect, maybe like some other vets did at the time. And then you have the wife who is worried about what I will say is some external factors right now. It's this cat. She sees this cat. It's raining. He's hiding under the table. What does she want to do with this cat? So it's to save it. Right. So maybe we have a little bit of motherly nurturing characteristics from her, you'd say? Yeah, that'd be fair to say. Well, another thing to think about as we go into this, keep that in mind, is agency. Okay. okay? What makes a character interesting to us as readers? Because if stuff just happens, okay, and characters are thrown through a book, <laughs> I mean, that happens, right? Bonnet, Bonnet <laughs> with Slaughterhouse Five, right? But if characters <laughs> are just thrown through a plot, typically, What agency is, is when characters impact the plot, when they make choices, when they choose to do something different. And that's important because maybe early on we see characters make bad choices. Maybe we see them not impact or fail to engage. And then usually by the end, these choices, choosing to engage, choosing to impact the plot or move things forward, are what will connect us to them as readers right Uh, and here in this story the question we have a question about decisions being made right she says i'm going down to get that kitty the american wife said i'll do it her husband offered from the bed no i'll get it the poor kitty out trying to keep dry under a table the husband went on reading lying propped up with the two pillows at the foot of the bed don't get wet he said So in a Hemingway piece, every line matters, right? He's very good about economy of words. And what he's doing here is showing you how the wife has agency. She's choosing to move forward and grab this this cat. And in the same way that the man is driving away from society, not looking at the war monument, sitting here reading into himself, he kind of half-heartedly offers to get the cat. But the second the wife's like, nope, I'm doing it, what's he do? So we're going to be more drawn to the woman a little bit here at this point. And notice that they call her the American wife at this point in time. There's a couple of different ways that we refer to her in terms of the American wife, the American, you know, the girl, and eventually just the girl. So again, Hemingway is kind of evolving through our perception of this woman as the story moves on, calling her from woman to girl It's calling into concept perhaps maybe some maturity concepts, right? Is this woman getting to a more mature point in her stage? And why is she going after this cat is another question that we may ask, right? Yeah, and so she's evolving in this relationship and he is staying stagnant in this relationship. And it's it's her decision of how she evolves here over nurturing and taking care of others as opposed to driving into herself is, is one thing that could be taken into account here. But you'll notice there's two words that we see a lot in this story. Did you pick up on them? Mm, dead. <laughs> so we have the usage of the word like. And that's used 10 times in what, like a three-page short story here? Yeah, it's like two and a half pages. Right. So when we talk about the hotel keeper, that's a very unique characteristic the way the wife relates to him because we have the wife liked him. She liked the deadly serious way he received any compliments. She liked his dignity. She liked the way he wanted to serve her. She liked the way he felt about being a hotel keeper. She liked the <laughs> she liked his old heavy face and big hands. <laughs> so what i think we're seeing though is not necessarily commentary really on the hotel keeper but more on what the wife wants right so how does the Mm. husband receive compliments right he ignores her but she loves the way the hotel keeper compliments her right and she likes his big hands Uh, could be taken as an implication of willingness to help is one way to take that And then how does the the husband serve her, right? She has this quote, she liked the way he wanted to serve her. And the husband's like, yeah, go get the cat. Don't get wet. (laughs) (laughs) So sometimes it's these external relationships that characters are having that are really having conversations about the main two characters of what she wants out of these other people is really saying what she's not getting from her husband. So yeah, her relationship with the housekeeper is what she's lacking with her husband and she's voicing that opinion. It's kind of interesting how he creates this complex web of relationships using a surrogate relationship. Right. 
Right. Exactly. Exactly. And now the other word that we have to talk about, not so like showed up 10 times. This next word showed up 18 times. And that's want, which I think is going to get us to what's the main theme of this story is what does the woman want that she's not getting? Why is she looking for it? Like you said, the surrogate relationship with the hotel keeper or even this cat. What would the cat bring to the American wife, girl with short hair? She wants to grow it out. She wants, you know, candles. She wants this kitty. What do you think are some things that a woman that's coming about from a mature standpoint, wanting to grow her hair out to be the American wife, what are some things that an American wife could want? Family, baby. So I think that's a conclusion that a lot of critics and readers have come to with this story is the wife wants something more, right? If we're going to have the post-war conversation, the men come home and what happens? We get a baby. (laughs) We get the babies, but this man's not being attentive. He's not serving her. He's not providing the role that she actually wants, right? Yeah, and I guess that leads to the the end of the story of that she's unfulfilled like I am after reading this story. I I don't get my satisfaction. (laughs) You know, if Uh, if there's so meta. Dang you, Hemingway. If there's one quote that I would really point to that I think maybe draws you even further into this concept of her wanting to mature and move on after this war, grow a family and such as we have as the American girl passed the office, the Padron bowed from his desk. Something felt very small and tight inside the girl. And that's where I think a lot of critics are going to is why is she being drawn into this tightness and this something inside of her? And could it be that desire and want of, of becoming the woman, growing her hair out, moving on past the war, and starting a family finally, is that potentially what this could be? Now, you talked about surrogate relationships earlier, right? Caring for something small, something that you can hold in your hands. Now we're moving on to the kitty and even that biographical element that we were talking about earlier of wanting the cat, of wanting something to nurture while the husband's gone, something to hold and love. Could that be the cat? And is the cat that we get at the end, right? Because it's described as a you know, little kitty, cute kitty, un- under this, this table in the rain. But when we have the maid come in later by the attentive hotel keeper sent out there, right? It's a tortoise-shelled cat. And did they describe it as large? I don't know. It, it felt very different to me. What were your takeaways? So I felt like it was definitely not the same cat. And it, to me, it kind of hit the old idea of that you don't always get what you want, but you get what you need. And this is what this lady feels. You know, she's trapped in this marriage that is unsatisfying. And while she kind of finally get what she wants, she might be disappointed that. And this idea that you don't always, you know, you aren't always happy with the outcome. And, you know, be, be careful what you wish for, because it might not be exactly what you want. And the last thing I'd bring up, too, is even just the rain. A lot of times in literature, rain represents rebirth, renewal, right? And this woman goes out wanting to start this new life, this new family potentially into the rain. Is that potentially a symbol of her eventually getting what she wants? And to your point, the tortoiseshell cat, uh, cat maybe the, the baby isn't what she wanted, right? Maybe it isn't the, everything that she expected. I don't know. It definitely raises the question of when is a symbol actually a symbol and when is a cigar just a cigar, right? Is it just rain and it was a convenient plot device to have a a cat be, you know, in a place for her to go look at? Is the cat really just a symbol of a baby or is it really just a cat and we're reading too much into this as readers? That's kind of up for us to decide whether you fall on the fence of, you know, reading is completely subjective or you think there's a lot more to it and what it tells us about ourselves. Let us know what you guys think down below in the comments. We've done tons of Hemingway stories. We're going to continue doing a few more. Make sure you check out our Ernest Hemingway playlist down below for more talks like we've had today. Let's move into our wrap-ups, our reader's review of the story subjective to us, not meant to be an objective rating of the story. Crypto, I think you've expressed a few times how he befuddles and casts a magic spell over you in terms of meaning. How did this one land upon you? So I, I'm always so confounded with dang Hemingway. <laughs> I, I don't like the story, but the story does bring up a lot of compelling discussional points. I also think it is a great teaching tool for 
gender roles being assigned in the early 20th century. Mm. I think it's great for relationships. I think it's great for how a uh, author can write one relationship as the surrogate for another, as I mentioned. I think that this story has a lot of different aspects that it can be used for young readers, but they're going to struggle to enjoy it, and you have to get past that point. So I don't know. Uh, I know I'm notorious for saying that there are better stories out there for teaching tools, and I really <laughs> think there are in this regard, that you could do the same thing and not, I don't want I hate to say it, but without punishing almost your young readers to having a negative view of Hemingway like I did, this is something I think for a more mature reader possibly that's going to have these deeper discussions and meaning. A 15-year-old is going to struggle to do that. Or at least I, I should say 15-year-old crypto struggled to do that. So how about just a, a nice six? Okay. I know for me, I, I see all the time how this is some people's favorite Hemingway. I, I can't say I've had the exact same reaction to this one. I'm probably a little bit lower on this one. I've definitely enjoyed, and I, I think it was easier to grasp more meaning out of some other Hemingway pieces as opposed to this one, but again, that's a very subjective experience for me. Uh, I'll go with a 7 out of 10 for this one, but uh, I can certainly understand how you could absolutely love this story and it could speak to you. Let us know down below what other interpretations that you've had, and let us know what you guys took away from this story. What are some things that made you love it or hate it for that matter? We'd love to hear from you down below. This is Una signing out. We post videos every Monday and Thursday. We'd love to hear you and uh, join us on the journey here by hitting that subscribe button. Una out. Peace.